Many of you come. Many of you have heard of the Florida Inclusion Network prior to coming to uh, My Career Shines. I was a Finn in the northeast part of Florida. So um, I'm looking at my system through the lens of, of your students. Uh, about the time our funding, if you remember, our funding moved to Fiddlers, um, we decided, I decided I might make a career change. So um, I found this opportunity to become the trainer for My Career Shine um, in 2015. That's when we started our contract. So I am a certified career advisor and global career development facilitator. If you tweet, uh, our company and I really appreciate them, especially when we're in conference mode. So be sure to include at Cooter, and I'll talk about that in just a minute, K-U-D-E-R. And my handle is at Maggie. M6967. We do have two trainers in Florida. So if you are here uh, attending this session and you live in South Florida, if you look at the South Southern District, we have a, a dedicated trainer for that area. Her name is Paula Crutchley. She's wonderful. Uh, so go ahead and take a second if you need to write her email down, uh, crutchleyp at cooter.com. You will love her. Um, accent from Manchester, England. Everyone just loves her. So um, be sure to reach out for training and I'll talk about how to do that a little bit later and how to get in touch with us uh, besides email. Okay, today what we're going to do is I'm going to give you a little bit of background, but we're taking a tour of My Career Shines and talking about um, what it is, why it's here. We are going to explore resources. I've also attached uh, one resource um, as a PDF that we will talk about. And we're, we're going to learn how students can plan for post-secondary education and or career. So My Career Shines, before I leave this slide, uh, you see in the lower right corner and you see on the left, Cooter Incorporated. I work for that company and we are global. By the way, we have contracts on almost every continent, not Antarctica. And we serve either schools, um, districts, and states. So we had a state contract when uh, we came into the contract in 2015. Uh, we, we named our system My Career Shine. So Cooter is the uh, creator of it, but our contracted brand is My Career Shine. Our namesake, um, many people ask us, why are you called Cooter Incorporated? But we are named after Dr. Frederick Cooter. And if you took that course, tests and measurements along the way, you would know that uh, he was known as the father of reliability. That's very important to our company, and we're very proud um, of, of having his namesake. We also want you to know before we jump into the system that our, we are highly researched. These are three of our top researchers that are also known worldwide. Um, and when we, uh, here's some research that we'd like to share uh, from that team there, uh, we have an 11% increase in school performance. And as you'll learn in just a minute, this is a pre-K to what we call gray, as in gray here, pre-K to gray system. So for our high school and middle school, we have an 11% increase. Um, we have a higher college transition rate at 90%. Uh, using our system, this difference in retention rates at 18%, and improved completion rates for 60%. So we're very proud of this research and the team that, that performs that research. Uh, before we jump in, I just wanna remind everyone that uh, our belief at Cooter is that career planning is a lifelong process. And you'll see on the next slide actually that we have a system we've just released for pre-K to fifth grade. Um, but starting in sixth grade and all through adulthood, we introduce our assessments. So I'll talk to you a little bit about those uh, for your student's level. And then from there, we'd like to use that data to explore occupations and majors, plan for education, I'll show you that those features, plan for work, and ultimately finding that job that's matched up to our strengths and our interests and work values. As I just mentioned, we do have three systems. It's really what makes us stand out with competitors. 
a lot of our competitors really focus on high school students getting into college. But we have a career exploration system I just mentioned called Galaxy. Uh, middle and high school system that's used all over. We have millions of users in our high schools and middle schools uh, due to some statutes that are now in place requiring career planning. So that's good for you all to know that they will have those high school experiences. And then we will focus today in just a few minutes on our system called Journey, which is for life after high school for any adult, any kind of adult, even including you. So um, we also wanted to let you know that uh, sometimes after training, I'll forget to say it, uh, but this system is free. It is funded by the Florida legislature to support every resident. So as long as you have a zip code in Florida, you can have a free account. And I'm not going to get into uh, on this session how to do that because that would be part of follow-up. So be sure to contact me if you would like to uh, share this with others. This summer, we had a little um, a hiccup, I'll say, that's all I'll say, with our governor and some funding. And um, we, in the process, we created a new URL, Cooter now owns it. And uh, our funding has been saved by the governor's office. So, but be sure to take note of the new URL because if you ever attended my sessions, you would know about mycareershines.org. So we are now mycareershines.cooter.com. I'll just pause if you're writing. Okay, we are going to go live into my training account and be sure to put your questions in the Q&A. I would like to uh, stop our session right at, uh, at, at 10 minutes until the end so we can take some questions. All right, here we go. Well, when you go in for the first time, let me just hit escape here. What you will know if you play around with it, sometimes uh, Microsoft Edge uh, can be wonky. We do prefer, we tell everyone in training, our system does prefer Chrome. So when you go into mycareershines.cooter.com, the first thing that you're going to see is this landing page. So here's our landing page. The first time you go in, and I have some explicit videos that I can send you that really maps out how to create an account, because this is where your students would like everyone to mute, please. The first time your students go in, they will go to create an account, and they will select an identifier. So you've got a college student, an adult education student, that's their student seeking a GED, or just a job seeker. So I'm not going to go into how to do that. I do have a resource to set you up and get your students rolling. So if you want that, just email me. But I'm going to go into my um, adult account for our demonstration. Okay. Before I get started, I'd like to share just a little bit about um, what I've learned about some students with uh, that might support some of your students with uh, visual difficulties or disabilities. Um, people often ask about text readers. I don't want to forget that's why I want to say it up front. Uh, we have two, we've experienced two text readers that work with our system that's called Zoom text and JAWS, all capital letters, JAWS. We also want you to know before we start that um, the system is written on a sixth grade reading level, and that's important for you to know. So this is not a training. My trainings are two packed hours full, but I am going to give you a bird's eye view of our system so you can start wrapping your mind around this amazing resource that, again, is free for your students. I just want to check in with Janice. Is everything good with audio right now? Yes. So okay. Far, and that's fine. Thank you. Everything is fine. We're having some people have difficulty just seeing a blank, a black screen. And if you are in, in Hoover, um, please let us know if you're having difficulty with that. 
Um, in the email that I sent this morning, you did receive the link directly into the Zoom. Um, so please use that. And yes, Janice just typed it in um, in the chat box and you can go in through Zoom and I will let you in as soon as I see you. Thank you. Okay. And Iris, can you see my screen that's on the dashboard, the three boxes in the middle? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. Can you okay. make it okay. um, bigger? Um, and if you're in, in Whova, you can hit the little button that at the top that allows you to enter full screen. Um, I'm not sure how to do it from my end. Um, you may just need to do control plus to make your, your um, video bigger. Okay. Is that better? Yeah, that's, that's better. Okay. All right. So um, just a few things about the dashboard. This is what the students see the first time that they log in. And what you see in front of you are the three career assessments. And I'll talk to you about those. I'm just going to do a little tour around this dashboard and then really spend the time uh, that we have left in this menu over here so you can see all of those resources. Um, students can upload a photo here. Um, they can change their level of participation. I'm, I have myself in here as a junior right now. There is a Spanish toggle. Let's be sure to mute ourselves. Um, there are some account settings where they can change their uh, passwords and some you know, typical account settings like any other social media. Also over here, uh, you all, I haven't mentioned this yet, but you all as the uh, folks that work with students in the system have the opportunity to create an administrative account. It's a separate account. Uh, than the students, but there's some things you can do in it besides running reports and seeing everything that your students are up to in My Career Shine. One thing that you can do is send one-way messages, and the students would receive the message right here where I'm hovering. Okay, then we've got a completed task list. This is self-regulated, as you can see, I'm un unlocking these, and um, they're just suggested steps at each level. Uh, depending on where your students are. Once they complete these activities, then they would check the box here, and then it would give them a completed percentage right up here. All right, we've got a note taker through every system. Um, I'm sorry, through every page that you're on, you have a note taker. They will always be located right down here, and we save notes based on where your students take notes in the system. Also, as an administrator, you can add, these are just some sample ones, you can add links onto your student's dashboard. So, and this is done by site. So, um, if Southeastern University right here where I live wants to add certain links on their student's dashboard, they can do it by site, for example. Um, so, they could be, you know, it could be College Board, it could be uh, the CTE website. Here's three examples as well. So that's done again by site. All right. So that is um, a snapshot of what's on the dashboard. You also have some results here. When students take their assessments, they will get, excuse me, they will get three results. So let me talk to you about these uh, assessments. So we have a, an interest assessment, which um, assesses just what it sounds like. A career interest. Then we have a confidence assessment, which is really unique um, to our system if you were to compare it, compare it to other systems. So what we're trying to do is match up where students are highly interested and where their confidence is aligned. And I'll show you that in just a moment. And then we have an assessment over here for work values. And when these metrics come together, then students will move over here to explore occupations and see how they're aligned. Before I take you there, what I do want to show you is one of your, a PDF, one of your PDFs that I included. I think I included a flyer you can download, but also this PDF I'd like to show you. And to, to get there, 
Uh, don't worry about where to find it because it is kind of buried in our system, but I did include it as a resource. Oftentimes, students will ask us, what do the colors mean on my screen? And this is a little poster that, I, again, I've included as a resource for you to help break down how we in the U.S. break down occupations. So uh, you can see the six career fields on the top and the corresponding 16 national career clusters. So, um, and I'm, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, but I do want to, you to know how we use this. Basically, what I'll do with students when they get their results is I will talk to them about their career interest first and look at those colors. And if you, if you were peeking at that poster, you know that purple uh, represented human services. So um, we, we'd like to expose them to the career clusters. And um, if you click on the inside of this box right here, you will get the top suggested pathways in order based on results. And then once students start exploring, they can learn all about marketing by clicking here. They can learn all about that marketing, mar excuse me, marketing communications as a pathway and then the national cluster and look at occupations within that cluster. Now that is one way to explore, but if you take my training, you're going to hear me really, really prioritize um, exploring occupations by assessment results. We really want students in Florida, whether you're uh, middle or high or in college or an adult user, but looking at occupations based on assessment results and that alignment. And what we know through lots of research, those researchers I showed you earlier, would also tell you that the number one factor in happiness in a career over time is interest. It's why it's our first assessment um, and it's why we like to prioritize that way. So what I'm going to do right now is kind of show you this uh, snapshot of suggested, please, if you don't mind muting yourself, um, I'm going to prioritize this list real quick by interest, there you go. And so once students go here, they'll learn in training, you'll learn all about these symbols. I can get into that later, but they do represent growth from ONET and our Bureau of um, Labor and Statistics data. So it is a symbol of growth, very good to see. So what I might do right here is click on an occupation with interest as a priority. And in this case, I have uh, alignment with my confidence, my skills confidence. That's very good to see. I apologize, I clicked on the wrong one. Let me go back. All right, I wanted to choose social worker. And again, this is not a training, it's just a high level overview, but I did wanna tell you, this is where your students take a deep dive into learning about that occupation as well as, um, as, well as some other information requirements in this case requires a bachelor's, some salary information, um, and national outlook data. We do also have videos throughout, and, and as a former, um, you know, Finn and working with students with disabilities my whole career, I appreciate these videos because they are closed captions. They're short. I don't think my sound is on, but you'll see they are closed captions. And we have videos from ONET for every occupation in our system. And then I'll just click over here and show you, these are just some tabs where they also go, uh, like I just said, take a deep dive into what is, you know, a social worker, what do they do on a daily basis? Again, this is written on a sixth grade reading level. I wanna skip over to education and experience. I will tell you that um, so for every occupation, what is the education and experience required? Are there other licenses uh, or certificates? And this is super exciting right here. If they click on one of these majors, what you're going to see is in our system, we partnered with the uh, we partnered with the um, I'm having a, I'm drawing a blank right now. Uh, but we partnered to, in order to receive information on schools in Florida, 
offering this major. Okay, so I can click on any of these colleges here or post-secondary institutions, and I can actually apply right from this account, right here. The online application is here. I can learn about the academic the programs and majors, application fees, costs. We have all kinds of uh, information on costs. And this is, from, I drew a blank, but here it is. The National Center for Ed Stats is where we receive all of this information. And we get, um, we get yearly updates, which is super important because these things do tend to change. Again, the cost in financial aid. And then I can learn about accreditation for that institution or campus crime statistics. So um, that is, it did take me over to explore school. So I'm going to go back to the same setup tab right here. Um, and again, I was looking at social worker. There's our salary information. And I also want to show you this. This is super exciting. I can also look at salary information and job opening opportunities by workforce region. So if you're here from region 12, you can see for social workers, we're at a 15% increase in your region. This is a powerful, powerful place for students as they start thinking about careers and are they going to be around for me where I live? So I did want to show you that. Um, that is a, an overview on exploring occupation. Before we um, move on into the portfolio piece, I did want to show you here, you can explore majors based on your assessment results. We uh, recommend and we do that in training. And by the way, here, it will take you to what you just saw before, which is uh, finding majors, uh, finding majors at post-secondary institutions in Florida, that same, same tab. I also want to show you plan for education and all of the resources here. Check this out. So I can again go to find schools. And when I click here, I can find those schools again and all kinds of ways that you can filter. Um, and I just want to show you the filters that we have here. So these are the 337 institutions in Florida offering post-secondary education. But over here is where we like students to filter. So they can filter by zip code if they need to commute and find institutions within a certain uh, distance. But you can filter by field of study, um, you can uh, types of degrees, tuition fees, and room and board. So I encourage you to do that. But again, we have 337 institutions. Some are unaccredited, and that's where we'd want to go back and check that accreditation, but these are Florida institutions. Learn about financial aid in this menu. I just want to point out, I'm not going to expand anything, but here they can learn about Bright Futures, I will come back to number three for you. They can get uh, their student aid ID. They can learn how to complete the FAFSA, what to bring to the FAFSA, and then actually this, they, this right here, number six, takes them to the FAFSA. Um, usually when I'm working with counselors or teachers, we hear the term one-stop shop, and I'm, I'm thinking that you're probably feeling our system is a one-stop shop for career planning and education. So I promised I'd come back to number three. I'm not going to expand too much on this, but I want you to know this is here. We have partnered with uh, Peterson's Database of Scholarship Searches, and currently we have over 3,000 scholarships for adult users. These are national scholarships. So please check these out. They're all designed uh, similarly. So when you click on one, you can determine if you are eligible and uh, learn about the donor and the, um, what the scholarship, uh, how much the scholarship is. In this case, it was in the title. And then they all have the link here to apply on each scholarship. So people get super excited, excited about our scholarship database as well as me. Um, so money is out there for your students. 
Again, you can also filter within this space and filter for uh, scholarships for particular um, attributes. On this list as well, students can find internships, find apprenticeship opportunities in Florida and learn about graduate school. Um, I'm, I'm knowing what you do. I understand that you also help students transition into the workforce. So the last two on this part of the menu is plan for work. And what I'd like to show you here is the interview process resources. We have um, one to five, one to five video modules on these topics. And I'll just go in and show you, for instance, um, common questions and additional outside resources. So here are four video modules. Um, these are fun to actually watch with students and start a critical thinking conversation um, on these topics to get them uh, learning about the interview process. And it ends with follow-up, how to write thank you notes. We've even got three sample thank you notes. All right, so as we move on, um, under plan for work, you can learn about a sample job application and also how to use social networking appropriately. Find a job. This is uh, essentially uh, you can learn how to research employers here. And when you go to find job openings, it does allow them to learn how to build a network first, which is um, learning how to network with agencies, how to call employers and also how to find jobs. Now, what we have done in our system is this allows them to connect with EmployFlorida.com. Okay, so what you have seen is the menu that uh, is titled Things to Do. Things to do in our system. What can you do in our system? Take assessments, explore occupations, majors, plan for education, plan for work, and find a job. Now, what I'd like to show you in the last just uh, 20 minutes or so is our amazing portfolio. It is, uh, it, it's something that we're very proud of at Cooter in allowing students to build a portfolio as they are learning about themselves. So first I'm going to show you our, is the location for their assessment. So when students uh, look under my assessments, they'll see the history of all of their assessments they've ever taken within our system. And what's really neat about that, and we do, we do, um, we do encourage students to take their assessments once a year, at least. Um, and when they do their house care, there are also some reports that are very interesting to run right down here. The reports will be reflective of their latest assessment results. And then over here, they can actually add other assessments. We've got some built into our system. And just keep in mind, this is a place to report scores. It doesn't take them to these um, websites. It just holds their scores, I'll show you. For ASVAB, you just drop in, for example, those scores, and then you save them. You can also add, which is my favorite, additional scores. If they don't take these assessments, just leave them blank. But in, my, uh, in this case, you could add, uh, my example here is a TABE score, which is we use for adult education. But it just shows you here how you can uh, add your own score um, if it's not on that list. And then here you would drop, I don't have this complete, but you would drop in the sub scores, for example, on this tape score. Uh, so it's just a place to report scores if you're proud of them. Next is my job search tools. I'm going to spend just a minute here. Um, I'll tell you about all of these resources right here. These are all templates. And what's amazing about our templates is it just makes this so easy to use for your students. So for example, my references, again, these are going to be uh, fill in the blank, fill in the form, and that's all students have to do. Okay, cover letters, I don't have an example, but I will show you the template and some built-in uh, universal design that I love about it. We do have a video and cover letter sample. But when students go to uh, complete a cover letter, what they do is they complete the template. And what I love about this, I just mentioned some universal design. 
um, are these examples. So when students click here, then they have, they have two bullets they need to cover in that cover letter. And then the same for each paragraph. And that's so they, they stay to the topic and make it, um, make it easy to follow and uh, to the point. Next, I'll show you the resume builder. I'll spend a little bit more time here. Um, I've got a bunch because I start them in training just to demonstrate, but I'll go ahead and show you one uh, and show you the template. I'm not going to teach you how to use it. I just want you to see it. And then we have eight sections and these are also uh, fill in the form, fill in the template. So on all of these, again, you would open them and provide the, uh, required information and any other additional information that would uh, support that student. So I'm just gonna let you peek at all of these sections and then I'll show you a completed one. Our completed resume, in my opinion, is what's well, very professional looking. It's very easy because they are just completing a template. Um, they can choose functional or chronological. And my example is chronological. And then once those sections are complete, they are editable. Okay, so I go up here, I choose a style, elegance, my favorite, and I go to preview and the click of a button. Usually when I have you all live, I can hear uh, people gasp. They're like, oh, where was this when I was younger? With one click of a button, you have the resume completed. We take all of the pain out <laughs> of that formatting process. So there's a beautiful resource for your students to start developing their own resume so they can market themselves. I'm skipping my favorites. We talk about the importance of this in training, but um, in the system, we encourage making those stars yellow when they are exploring um, uh, their work, uh, favorite clusters, occupations, schools, majors, person matches, and financial aid resources. Um, sources is the, are the scholarships um, that they favorite. Next, I'm going to show you our document uploader. I apologize on this one. I only have one example, but um, on my example, uh, I just want you to know you can have up to 20 supporting documents. So you know what, this is replacing that old three ring binder with those clear um, page covers where we would put our letters of reference or projects we're proud of or any demonstration of uh, skill. Also back on the resume, if I say that I've earned an award or that test score I'm proud of, this is where I'm going to be transparent and prove, and prove all of those things. So it is a, a document uploader where students can actually showcase their skills and talents. And these are the fields that they have to complete. And they do choose a category document type, and then they can put a description if they choose to. All right, I only have one in my training account, but you can have up to 20, like I just mentioned. All right, we are going to wrap this up before I take questions, but I need to show you, in my opinion, the best thing about our system. Please keep in mind this is free. And for a free product, uh, we have a pretty amazing electronic, uh, we call it the e-profile, but it, it is the electronic portfolio. So um, this is where students will save um, at the bottom of this page. They will go down at the bottom and save and publish. Now, when they do that, what happens is they will receive this URL. Now, what this URL is, is a way for me to market myself with an electronic portfolio. So let me give you an example of how I would use this. So your students have taken their assessments, explored, they're putting content in, they're uploading documents, you know, everything they can possibly do, build that resume. And then um, I was invited today by Iris. Uh, you helped me set up, so I'm going to use Miss Neal as an example. Miss Neal, you have a job opening next week and I'm interviewing. So I could write you an email Dear Ms. Neal, I look forward to my interview next week. In the meantime, uh, please check out my web page. So I would go here, I'd right click on it, copy it, and then put it in that email. So 
So I'll show you what Ms. Neal would see uh, when she opens that. So I'm going to go on down, choose a color scheme. Here is a place if your students have a LinkedIn, they can put their link in here. If they use Twitter for professional reasons, which I do, um, you could have them put that here or leave it blank. And if they are connected to any kind of website, for example, um, let's say they built their own website. If it's an appropriate website, they could put it here. Um, let's say they won an essay contest in high school and it was published in the newspaper and there's a link, they could swap it in here. So anyway, um, if a person is connected to a website or a URL and it's appropriate, they could um, put it here. But I just, I have one blank. Here's a per, uh, the photo you saw earlier. This is just a simple welcome statement. You'll see that in a moment. Welcome to my electronic portfolio or my web page. And then this, you just check off how do people reach me in case I get that second interview. And go ahead and have them, you know, share their favorites, nothing wrong with that, or their assessment results. And then have them choose the um, re resume. They probably will just have one unless they have a separate. Some people build two resumes if they have specialized skills, like if they're a musician or if they're in a CTE program and they're a, a new welder. So they may have a different resume for specialized skills, but most people just have a general. But it does show you, you can add as many resumes as you like. Those are my training resumes. Okay, those are references. And then you just saw this marketing project that I'm proud of. But again, I could have up to 20 documents here. So Miss Neal gets my email. The first thing that she's going to think is, well, this gal has some tech skills if she's sending me an electronic portfolio. So she'd click on this URL, and this is what she would see, or anyone who is, has been sent this URL. Now, what I like to tell students, if they are in an interview and, uh, and they're competing with someone who walks into their interview with just a paper resume, but they have either opened this up during, a, during an interview or prior to, just like my example, they, even if they have similar skills, um, if they're very, you know, similar qualifications, personality types they're looking for, they will have an advantage just because of technology. And I know this is what we want for our students. Um, it's the world we live in. So let me just go down this page and show you what's here and what it looks like from the uh, electronic side. So this LinkedIn right here, I'm not going to open it, but it does go straight to my LinkedIn. This also goes straight to my Twitter. Okay, down here are four sections. So the first section is again, how are you going to reach me? If you want to uh, call me back for an interview or ask me clarifying questions, uh, what are my favorites? And I went ahead and shared my top career pathways and um, in two of my assessments. Now, I'm going to work from the bottom up and share the resume last. So my portfolio is that document or up to 20 documents again. I can actually open this up because it's in, uh, in Word form. My references are located here. And then before I click on my resume, keep in mind what it looked like before. It was what you would print off of a printer. So it was a paper resume. It's going to look different because now it is an intuitive part of my web page. So I'll click here. The content is all here. It just looks different because it's part of my web page. And then if I wanted to print it before I walk out of the office, I could print it right there from preview. There's a print option. So there you go. This is our uh, electronic portfolio or web page that students are able to share. What I would like to do at this time is head back to my uh, last slide for you and remind you also, let me, Correct slide. Uh, remind you that we do have a team in Iowa always willing to help. Um, you don't need to write this number down unless you have tech issues, but I'm hoping that you reach out for training. 
My training is free. I'm covered as well. Um, and, and it being at no cost to the user, I'm Miller M at tutor.com. And um, I, our trainings are virtual right now for two hours. We cover all. I teach you how to use the system, how to set students up. And before I leave this, I do want to encourage you all to create your own account. Go to mycareershines.cooter.com and either pretend you're a student at your school or enter as just a job seeker. It's free. Might as well build your own resume because what we like to do in training, and we do, we give you your own sample student account, but what we want you to do with the system is use it like you know, for instance, on the day that you create resumes with your students, why not have yours up and demonstrate and use it as a teaching tool so they can follow you? So we always give you these sample student accounts. But in the account, in the account, ver excuse me, in the adult version of this, you can go to mycareershines.cooter.com, go to create an account, and choose either college student, attach yourself at your school, or your institution, or as just a job seeker. So what I'm going to do now is um, look at, I'm going to stop sharing and look for q and I don't see Q&A, but um, does anyone Can you all hear so me? So I should have unmuted everyone. I'm going to go through and unmute you um, so that you can ask questions. Um, I believe that you have to unmute yourself as well, but I have unmuted you from my end. Um, if you're in, in um, Hoover, I do have the chat and the Q&A. We do have one question in the Q&A, which is, what is the most recommended template or planning tool for best assisting students with career planning while they are in um, a comprehensive transition program? Um, I guess I need clarification on templates. What does that mean? Um, that question was from Marissa Hasty. Marissa? Would you be able to explain more? Everyone should be unmute. Yes, I can um, explain a little bit more because I know <laughs> for um, our program for some, you know, like goals or planning or laying out kind of their vision for like, career aspects. Um, we use currently like, I don't know who's all heard of like star planning, which is students transitioning to adult roles. And that's kind of like, the template or the form that we use for laying out like goals and action steps through that process. So I just didn't know if there was like other recommendations or resources for either refining that process or otherwise. Well, we don't have a template um, of sorts that you're describing, but what I would recommend is use that template, but make sure it's uploaded in their document. Um, and that's the place that they could house that template and keep it updated. Does that work? Yes, thank you. Yeah, I definitely agree. Thank you so much for the presentation. This is very, very informative. Thank you. Any, any more questions? So we have another question. Did you mention that this program is free to try? Yes, I, I think I said that a few times because it's legislatively funded. It's really cool because we have uh, other state contracts in Indiana, Oklahoma, but they don't have it designed like Florida. I really love our system because the way that we wrote our contract is we made it free for every resident in the state of Florida. So if you have a zip code, it is at no cost for you. I'm also, as the lead trainer in Florida, covering Glades County all the way to Alabama, um, my services are free. I didn't. I did not send um, uh, Iris uh, an invoice to be here today. My services are covered as well, and I'm all about follow up. So if I provide you training, I want to help you along the way. Hello, I have a question. Yes, Anthony. 
sorry. Um, so I'm over here in Florida as well. I'm in Cape Coral I'm at the Technical College. And when I went to sign up for it, it was asking about, and I don't know if you've covered it, the organization at access code and password. Is that something that we request or that you provide? Okay, what you're talking about, okay, students, students will never be asked for that information. What you Correct. clicked on was, yes, what you clicked on was administrator. And um, if you want your admin code, so you can see everything from the, from the administrator, that means you can see all your students, run reports, um, that side I mentioned early on. All you have to do is email me and I'll send you those codes. So two things to keep in mind. We want you to have a sample student account. You can easily do that, as I explained earlier, on mycareershines.cooter.com. Make sure when you click on create an account, you click on one of the adult choices, either college student or I think it's job seeker. Um, you would probably not choose adult education, um, oh. but either job seeker or unless you work with adult education students. Um, so yes, you can create your own sample account. The other account people get after my training is the admin account where you can see all of your students and everything that they're doing in the system. So if you want that account, I will send you your codes and a little video on how to use it. Does that help? Yeah, it does. Yeah, because right now we're actually we use an area, a program called College Central, and it's as far as resume building, your option that you're providing has a lot more creative ways to build a resume than just the basic generic professional resume that comes on College Central. So I'm actually looking forward to having other options for students as well. Okay, Anthony, did you get Paula's email? You're in her region. Do you want me to put it in the chat box? Yeah, that would be great. Okay, she is. She will take your email. She'll set set up a training for you. Anyone else? Thank from you. The seven. You're welcome. Anyone else from the seven districts in the south? I'm putting Paula's uh, information right here. She's Crutchley P at cooter.com. Any other questions? And she doesn't charge either. If there are no other questions, I want to thank everyone for coming. Uh, we're about seven minutes uh, early, but I will, I can stay here for any additional questions if you think of them. Um, but we are, that is, that is um, closing up the session here, but I'll hang on. And um, Maggie, Ada, the guards, said that we work extensively with soft skills and professionalism, as well as job seeking. These are good tools for all of our students. Absolutely. And if you come to my, uh, if you ever come to my training, I will follow up with some additional soft skills. At I don't see why not. Isn't that the same thing we put on Canvas? I'm, I'm sorry, I think we've got what is conversations the going on. Yeah, we have it on. There shouldn't be a yeah. big to do. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So I have to mute everyone, um, but you can still ask questions if you need to. Um, this is Marco Izzo, and I have a question. Um, since we, you mentioned that the program is at a sixth grade reading level. And so um, if students can't read at a sixth grade reading level, what, um, what accommodations or supports are built into the program? And then my second question is information about industry recognized credentials. Could you indicate what are uh, the most popular industry recognized credentials in the Florida area or statewide? Oh, I also muted. Um, hang on. All right. 
Maggie, you should be able to answer. If you may be on mute and you may have to unmute yourself because I did mute everybody, unfortunately. Okay. There you go, Maggie. You should be able to answer that question. Yeah. Try unmuting on your phone. Yep. All right, last choice is typing in the response in, um, in the, in the Q and A. I apologize for that. We had some people talking and I couldn't find who it was. Um, Maggie, try again. Okay, so I think that if we we can um, have Maggie um, respond to you to that question in the in the chat or the community board in Hoover, that would be great. I apologize for that, um, but it looks like she's looking for the ants or giving you the answers on screen. Thank you. Mm. All right, Roger, um, you can unmute yourself or you're unmuted. So um, you can raise, ask your question. Everyone yeah, should this Hi, how you doing? This is Roger Barnhart, McFadder Tech, uh, Broward County. Um, we're using College Central, and I understand probably there's other people on here that are using College Central also. Um, could this replace, or is this an addition to the functionality of College Central? I don't really know if anybody could answer that. I know the advantage, sorry, this is Anthony at Cape Tech. I know the advantage that I have with College Central right now is that I have a lot of uh, businesses that I have registered in there and I can use that. I'm thinking about Personally, I'm thinking about using both options, um, just the communication with businesses through College Central and setting up the job fairs and everything. I'll still use that in College Central, but then the resume building looks like it's much easier to use on My Career Shines and would require very little editing and formatting at the end. So I'm looking to probably utilize both. Yeah, thanks. I, that's about what I was thinking too, is probably using both, but um, I, I'm not real familiar with College Central. I know that our team does have employers in there also. I assume that this product does not have that functionality. Is that correct? I personally did not see that option. Um, I don't know if the the uh, people that had this presentation be able to answer that better. But I know with the College Central, the advantage that we have there is that businesses are registering nonstop pretty much. I get about two or three businesses a week. Um, and I can also register myself businesses there too. And um, the advantage that I have is the bulk upload ties in with our service, with our software too, where I can just upload students that way. I don't think I can do that on my career shines. From what I saw that I would have to manually do it. Um, I did submit that question in though um, to uh, the email that I received in that chat box. So I'm waiting for her response on that. But it looks like I'm probably going to end up like I was saying using both both options for a little bit. That's probably what we'll do also. Okay, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Maggie, if you'll call in again, maybe that will help answer the questions. We just have a couple more minutes, but I know Maggie does want to answer your questions. Um, and, and I'm not sure what happened. Um, I know she was having difficulty with sound on her 
her computer earlier um, and was calling in. One other question was, do we need an activation code to create an account? And I do not think that you do have to have an activation code. Um, and let's give her one more second. She's getting there with the numbers and she looks really stressed. 